How you guys doing? Happy Father's Day out there to all you fathers. It's about time we get a holiday for ourselves. My problem is that they always take care of moms better than they do us fathers. Anyway, we're going to be talking about new motorcycle clubs. And you might have noticed a little change to the YouTube channel. And that change is we're going to be doing some real talk, baby. Because one of the things I have been doing is looking at all the content from a lot of creators about the MC scene, about the biker scene, the biker lifestyle. You can, you claim it. I friggin' been looking at it, okay? And what I noticed is there is not whatsoever any real talk being done on these channels. It's basically them pushing daisies up your rear end, saying everything is a bunch of ice cream and cookies. This ain't cool, man. I think that does a disservice to anybody and everybody that comes to our channels to get entertainment and maybe some life experiences. But this Daisy stuff ain't cool at all, man. It really ain't. Uh, this Kumbaya, this we need to start an organization, all that is just pure BS. And I'll tell you why. Because a lot of this has been tried in the scene already and is already going strong, I'd have to say, since the mid 1980s. So for creators to come in here who don't know their ass from a hole in the ground to try to talk about organizations that are trying to bring everybody together, it's just comical at this point. So that's why I figured, you know what, it is just time. It's time to rebut a lot of this stuff that's been put on the internet, especially when it's concerning clubs. One of the most popular topics out there, and you know, Hollywood has to give his two cents, is the starting of new motorcycle clubs. And what I have to say to that is run, run, baby, run, because starting a new motorcycle club is ass nine. Trust me, there's a lot of situations I know about that. Uh, it's just the ass nine thing when there's clubs already out there. It's like it's oversaturated. There's clubs for everybody out there. I'm talking you got your one percenter uh, clubs all the way down to your freaking Tinkerbell clubs, okay? Every lifestyle you can imagine that somebody lives, there is a club for it. Why would you want to put all your effort into something that's just going to fail? Most clubs that are new do not make it to the one-year point. And if they do, they don't make it to the five-year point. So why are you putting all your effort in to doing something that is a known failure when you got clubs that have been out there decades upon decades. And I'll tell you why you don't want to do it. Because you're a chicken shit. You're a chicken shit to the hundredth degree. What do you mean, Hollywood? I'm a chicken shit. Well, you don't want to prospect. You don't want to probate. You want to try to skirt the process. You don't want to man up. You don't want to put on your big boy pants. You just think you're owed a patch. And then it's even funnier. There is so many people talking about MC stuff. It can rattle your mind. It really can.
It's like, dude, here's one dude uh, out there on Facebook writing all these kind of niceties and stuff like that on why the MC or why the one percenters are dicks. And they're a one percenter, they're claiming. Where the hell is that coming from? There's another one that uh, is a one percenter club that started as a cop club. Where is that coming from? There is even somebody out there giving advice that was in or is in a one percenter club that was on a freaking reality series. How helpful is that when somebody who is greener than green hasn't even popped a nutsack yet goes out into the real world and wants to do an MC? They're going to get their asses handed to them. And the problem is us, the creator, filling them with all kinds of bull that they're going to take to the streets and get an ass whooping. You're in charge of somebody getting an ass whooping with the material you put out. A lot of people claim, and by the way, happy Father's Day, everybody. A lot of people claim, well, this big one percenter club contacted me and said we're doing awesome with the content we're putting out. Bullshit. Okay? The first thing a real one percenter club is going to tell you is don't send anybody our way with that crap. Because protocol tradition is all on a local level. This ain't a national deal. Each chapter has its own quirks. One thing you say in West Coast ain't going to happen in the Midwest or in the South. So what are you doing? You're confusing the hell out of everybody. And you have to hold yourself responsible, if you will. Because a lot of people do email, ask questions... And you know the first thing I say? Don't do it. First thing out of my mouth. Don't do it. Run. Because you're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to get anywhere with us talking to you about it. You're not going to get anywhere with you reading this nice tiny post on Facebook. And then you got a whole Facebook group dedicated to trying to school you. What? This is madness. Absolute madness. I know there's two different realities. There's the reality of the streets, and then there's like a reality in this cyberspace stuff. It's like one of them games that is being played in a virtual world or whatever the hell it is, where people cannot interact for real. That's what I see going across all these channels. The worst part, to me personally, is I never want to see anybody get hurt. Never, never, never. But I do know the reality of it is a lot of them are going to get hurt for watching this kind of stuff. So, a new MC... I want to be straight up. You're the dumbest box of rocks out there if you're going to try it. There's nothing but freaking drama when you're starting up a new MC. First, you got to go to the dominant. And then the dominant's going to go in. Why ain't you just going to go with a different club that's already started. And you say, well, I don't want to do something like that because that's not my thing. Well, what's your freaking thing is there's clubs all over the place that can cover that. But you're not being honest with yourself. And by that, I mean, you just don't want to prospect. You're a coward. Those are cowards in my eyes. You know, prospecting is one of the funnest things out there. It's not the old days where you're eating shit burgers and all them horror stories you heard. 
basically all it is even though you're doing nominal freaking tasks is getting to know the people on a personal level isn't that what you claim you want to join a club for anyway is you claim you want to have that brotherhood well how the hell are you gonna have that brotherhood if you don't know the people that are supposedly in your club that's what prospecting's all about so why be a punk? Why be, you know, scared to actually get in there and get to know people? It's something I'll never, ever understand. And I get it. There are some very well-intentioned creators out there. There are some very well-intentioned uh, so-called experts out there that are trying to get you a little edge on getting into a club. The first thing is most people don't even know how to get in one. You always hear it. You always read it that, hey, how do I, I don't know how to get in contact with one. Get off the damn freaking internet and get out there in the bars and the swap meets, uh, different events, and maybe you just might come on one. I have to answer this one right here. I love this new platform. Uh, Archie, looking for easy way out. Isn't that everybody nowadays? They don't believe in the hard work. They want easy streak. They want it to where they're getting patches and they're hoping that they get some patch chasers that will suck on their little weenies. That's the glory that they're thinking about. They're not thinking about putting in the hard work, and at the end of the day, they earned it. You, I see this one guy always banging on one percenters, but claims to be one percent. How can your counterparts even respect you when you're doing that kind of stuff? There is no respect for that kind of crap. It's actually, you're trying to make yourself feel good because you started this so-called 1% club and you're hiding in the backyard. That's not a club hiding in your backyard. So if you're a new MC, at least do it right. You know what? Go out there, talk to your dominant, stop being a punk, and you're going to see the whole different scene as you've never seen it before. It's not the club's fault, the dominants. It's not their fault that you're a pussy and can't get out there and interact with people even though you're throwing on a three-piece patch. Now, I know the world has changed. God, I'm reminded of that all the time. I know it's changed. Three pieces don't mean what they used to, two, ones, whatever it may be. Because God forbid we got freaking, uh, what's it called, uh, law enforcement wearing three-piece patches now. But one thing that hasn't changed is going to that dominant, getting into the fold and partying and getting what you want to get. But the reason why new MCs don't go to the dominance is because you got crackheads on the internet telling you you have a constitutional right to where you don't have to do that. Oh, hogwash is what I say. For one, they never been in a club, okay? So why listen to them? Number two, they're jealous. It's all about jealousy, people. Straight up. They don't like it because they ain't wearing it. Sad state of affairs, if you ask me. So go to your damn dominant. Get out of your backyard. Go there. Get to know them. And be freaking honest, man. Don't use that BS that there's nothing out there that thinks like me. Again, you got one percenter clubs all the way down to Tinkerbell. 
I can't even give all the freaking letters that's in that thing, okay? It, it seems like the, the different deals with uh, there's no man and woman stuff. There's like 20 different type of deals. I can't go over the freaking initials, okay? That's lost on me. But who agrees with me? You have to agree that a lot of people don't go to the dominance because they're chicken shit. But they want to go wear a three-piece patch. At that point, I have to say, put up or just shut up. Nobody wants to hear you whining on the internet on why you couldn't go to the dominant or how you don't think tradition applies to you. Nobody wants to hear that crap. Because if you're such a big badass, then get out there, interact with people. But no, you sit in a backyard or you sit in a garage, you stare at yourself in the mirror and pull yourself. That's what you do. You pull the pecker because you know in your head that you're too weak to do it the right way. And if you really believe anybody, and that includes me, giving you advice is going to help you out there, you're a freaking moron. You're a moron to the 10th degree. If you think anything on this internet is going to help you out there. Or I even see these people giving advice when you're in a motorcycle club. That's a legit one about how you could better that MC or how you should do this or do that. Man, get the hell out of here. I know people ain't that moronic. And if they are, they shouldn't be in an MC in the first place. What is it with why people cannot just go and ride a bike? No, they want to get into something that they have no ideal about. They've never been in an organization before. And what I mean, I don't mean the Elks or a Masons that understands this kind of stuff. No, they just want to throw it on, go out there, and look like a Billy Badass. But when it comes to, okay, you skipped that protocol or you skipped that tradition of going to a uh, one percenter, they find your ass or one of their support clubs in a bar, and guess what? You're hemmed up. Lucky, most of the time, they give you a warning. Then you approach them legit. And you get it worked out. But most people, even with that, are going to run home to their wives and cry a river about how the big bad one percenter just ran us off. And they said, we have to do that or do this. So two things are going to happen at that point. You're going to bitch out and not go to the meeting, which happens all the time. Or two you're going to run back into your garage and don't want to come out because the big, bad, scary boogeyman might get you. Let me go here to uh, Sear. Cheryl! What's up, Sunshine? Uh, Sunshine's a new member of the Throttle Club. If you want to become a member of the Throttle Club, just hit that. Uh, what happened to the Pride members felt when they earned their three-piece patch? How can you call yourself a brother in your chosen brotherhood if you take the easy way in? I love this girl. I love her. She knows what she's talking about. What happened to Pride? What happened to Pride in yourself? That's a quality that is surely gone now, isn't it? Going through that process, working hard for it, and at the end of the day, earning something. But too many people now grew up with trophies thrown at them before even the event starts. So they feel entitled to it. I, personally, 
as a man. I don't know how they look at themselves in the mirror. I'd be embarrassed. Maybe it's the air I came from, but I'd be totally embarrassed. Just getting ran out of the place. What I always say is this. If you don't want to follow the tradition, you better back your patch. Meaning, you're going to either get your ass kicked or you're going to do the ass kicking. Just be prepared if you do the ass kicking to have the retaliation for that ass kicking. It's called back in your patch. Well, what about all these other clubs that never, ever, pro or ever went and asked permission for what they did? You're shitting me, right? That's the argument you're going to try to throw out. Most of the clubs you see around now that are decades old, that just started up, as you say, they backed their patch. They earned the reputation that they got. It's called street cred, people. They earned it. So you're going to come back with a stupid argument that, well, this club member asked permission then you're naive. You shouldn't even be riding a bike because you're too stupid. You don't know the ways of the streets then, you dummy. That argument's hogwash. That ain't going to get you anywhere. But I do have to admit here, I've seen some weird-ass shit. You know... I was operating the channel as it was a long time ago, decades ago, and things have really changed, trust me. It's really changed, if you ask me. It was like one day the light went on for me, and that's why I decided on, you know, redoing this a little bit with real talk, because these other ass nines ain't going to give it to you. They're too this is actually a business, guys. I don't do this out of the kindness of my heart. You know, I'm a cool guy. I'll talk with everybody. But at the end of the day, this is a business. So the business is to get the most subscribers. Problem with that is you'll sell your soul. You'll put out incorrect information. You'll try a niche, as we call it, to pull people in. I don't believe you do that. I don't believe it. And I don't believe you give advice on starting a new motorcycle club. What you should be doing is telling people, no, don't go start a new motorcycle club. There's hundreds of them out there. Go join that. Do you know out of all these protocol channels... I didn't see anybody preaching that. I didn't see anybody saying, you know what, don't ask me about starting a new club. Get your ass out there and just go join the existing one. I never see it. And why is that? Because that is the draw. That's the hook. Let's be honest. Because they're going to keep on coming back for the advice about something they shouldn't be doing in the first place. And then they're going to get a smackdown when it comes to going out there and actually riding with them damn patches. And now you have law enforcement that are starting clubs. They're starting associations now. You got one called the Law Abiding Biker. It's a revolution. They're trying to counter all the other clubs, which, hey, it is what it is. But with me, it was always that line, what the hell are you guys doing going to these law enforcement clubs? You know, one comes to mind, the Punishers. Oh, am I going to get some freaking hate mail now? You got all kinds of law enforcement, all that type of stuff. And by the way, they want their damn, you know what, that Punisher series wants its freaking patch back. 
You guys are freaking thieves, man, taking that shit. But anyway, they go out there and have thrown such a wrench into what is actually called tradition, what is actually called protocol, and they have upended everything, and you have people stupid enough that followed that crap. So now everything's screwed up. Now you got these people believing they have a constitutional damn right to wear what the hell they want, and they're getting dotted eyes left and right. It's because of you guys, you law enforcement guys. You ain't cool, man. You do not go and play dress up as biker and try to ruin everything. Because in the, at the end of the day, you're getting people hurt. Now, that's kind of an asshole move, man, if you ask me. That's an asshole move. Not cool whatsoever. And especially when you go around harassing diamonds or you harass regular clubs and then you go play dress up now i know that law enforcement officials they have a hard time getting taco okay i get it you know it's not my fault it's not the biker community's fault that you got a small pecker and that you feel you have to go and be something you're not See, a wise old man once said, God, you know, he's gone. You either want to be a cop or you want to be a biker in a club. You can't have both of them. Very wise from the 1970s. Very wise. You can't have both. But that's what we got. That's what we have now. And you know what? I just love this right here. Bronx biker life. A smack in the face to MC tradition. And it is. You know, when you go to the Masons, they have tradition, do they not? You have a process to get involved in that fraternity. Just like in college, there's a process to become a part of that fraternity. Moose, Elks, you name it, it's there. So why do you think it's special for you could so you could break that tradition i don't get it would you guys freaking tell me what's up with that can you guys give me a little information because i'm dumbstruck here about how these channels are not telling you the right thing the right way of doing things no they rather give you you know what I said this the other day. You see how all these channels are giving you advice on how to do this with a club, how to do that with a club. And I sat back and I slapped my head on my hand on my head. I was like, you know what? Law enforcement don't even need to do any work anymore. All they have to do is wear their ugly suit and tie, you know, the one that they get from Goodwill, sit back in their chair with the coffee and the donut in the other hand, and watch the internet. Just watch YouTube. They are giving the advice to law enforcement on how to infiltrate clubs. Well, you should do this, and you should do that during this and that. It's like, are you freaking crazy? That's how bad it's become. You're doing their work for them. And then you, you, you wonder why that you have so many infiltrations. You're giving them the way in. Do you know how easy it is now? Because clubs are just looking for people hand over fist to get in one? But you want to go out there and hide because you wanted to start a new club. Let's see what we got here. Right, let's go into the comment section. Uh, let's see here. What we got here? Uh, Sunshine, respect the Leo clubs as long as you're transparent and truly support your brotherhood. Uh, 
what else we got here? Ironhead, better do this, do that, but on the better side of advice, join an existing club. My God, I love my audience because at least you get it. There are so many people that just don't get it. I'll look at the, as I'm doing the research on these channels, I'll look at the comments and I can actually pick the ones out that might be in a club and might not, and that aren't. You can actually see it on how they talk, how they comment back. You know what, guys? You're supposed to give constructive criticism, not hang off of a creator's schlong. That's what you're supposed to do. You don't get it to where you puff somebody's chest up. Because if you do know that they're wrong on a subject and you do know that it might get somebody hurt, say something. And I know people will people will erase our comments. For one, when you're commenting on a video, it's held in review for us to check out because YouTubes are a bunch of ass nine censorship donkeys that you can get busted down on your channel. So it's held for a review. We look at it. If you're like on my channel, you're swearing or any of that stuff. I don't even have time for you. You're done. But leave comments that are going to address the problem. How many of you know people going to start a new motorcycle club and say constitutional right? Here's the thing. And I know this is always mentioned. Well, people get pissed when one percenter clubs are all and others say, you know what, this is against our constitutional rights. See, and they point the finger. See, see, I told you, you guys are hypocrites. You want to take ours away. The problem with that is, remember that line I was talking about? It's always been, always been bikers against the government. It's always been that way because the government don't like us. Because you know why? We get a lot of taco and they don't. That's the, you know what? I truly believe that is why they do, they don't like us because we get the tail. Just saying. But anyway, so you're going to try to throw that situation up to me. Okay, here we go. They are fighting the government for actually your right to freaking exist. That doesn't mean you break street tradition and street law because you're in a different subset of society, you dummies. You got to be real, man. They're actually fighting for you for the place that you want to be, but you still have to follow the traditions. If not, you're just a poser. See what we got here. Let's go to some questions. Uh, Jeff Kimber. I do know Punishers are an LE club, but not every member in there are cops in the first place. And that's why that line has been blurred. People go join these law enforcement clubs. And they might not be cops, but what they're doing is they're, again, circumventing the process because they have it easy over there because they're, no, they're not going to get run down or any of that BS. You know, the fun stuff of uh, prospect periods. They know that it's going to be easy for them. And what do they get? They get a three-piece patch that they can run out in the bar scene, act like Billy Badass, and hope they get some tail. Thankfully, a lot of women know the difference between something real and not. So they might not get lucky. They might have went through all that work to join an LE club, which, well, by the way, I have to say, that's some punk-ass shit you're trying to pull right there. Why would you run to them? I don't get it. Don't you understand that if something goes down, they are not going to take your side. 
They're not. That's just BS, guys. They're not taking your side. They're going to be on the side of the cops because they are a cop. It don't matter if you're wearing their patch or not. You are not truly a damn brother to them. You sure the hell ain't going to be doing lines with them or partying and all that kind of stuff because door gets busted down with law enforcement. Next thing you know, they'll arrest your ass. And how could you have any fun in the law enforcement club? You can't, like I said, you can't do lines. You can't smoke this. You can't go out there acting stupid. You can't run around naked. And they'll probably ticket your ass while you're there wearing colors. That's just an ass nine ideal to me, man. It really is. That's ass nine. But you do it to circumvent the process. Uh, Antisocial. Why did you use the Reaper Lord's patch? You're talking about on the thumbnail? That is a jab at all those clubs that don't want to follow tradition and protocol. It is a jab because what they're doing is playing GTA and thinking that's going to translate into real life. That's why I use that stuff. Sometimes in the thumbnails, there's things that I do to throw a jab out there. And the Reaper Lords patch is a GTA thing, just like these fools are out there playing. Let's see here. What else do we got here? Sergeant Grinch, my Grinch, man, my traitor to the cause. Uh, police academies do not teach laws. They teach weapons, tactics, report writing, and how to speak cops plainly. You know what? I always have problems with cops when I talk to them. You know what? It's just like not talking to a person. It's like talking to a wall sometimes. They try to hold that unemotional BS crap. And it's like, dude, are you even a real person? Do you even blink or something like that? I don't know what police academies teach, uh, Sergeant. I'm not one of them. Uh, I don't want to be one of them. I never have wanted to be one of them. Uh, so, you know, the only thing that I know about police academies is that, you know, the movie Police Academy with Steve Gutenberg. Now, I have to admit, that's some funny shit. <laughs> it is. It's some funny shit. I don't care who you are, especially if you're smoking a damn doobie or something like that. Uh, Fred Schmidt. What's up, Freddy? Uh, I get the want to start a club. However, you really need to understand the area you're in. In Lake County, Ohio, we had two clubs start. And if you're in uh, Ohio, I know the clubs that are out there, and I I'm thinking it probably didn't go too well with them, but you're all, you're, you're truly right, man. You're right on top of this. If you want to start a new club, do the right thing. Cause I guarantee you, if you do do it right and you do start getting near everybody, that club ain't going to be so important to you. And you're going to say, why? I just started a new club. Well, it's because you're around different clubs and you see their numbers. You see how cool they interact with each other. You see how they ride with each other and you want to be them. So why go through all the damn headache? That's what I say. I say do things easier and not harder. Go join a real club. That's what I say. That's the easiest way to say it. Uh-oh, the Punisher, true that, okay? I don't know if you're with the Punisher's Motorcycle Club or what, buddy. Uh, so, you know, what on, what on? Uh, let's see here. My boy J-Man, and I got to talk about J-Man here. J-Man has his own YouTube channel, and I got to talk to him this morning, and I know a lot of you guys miss biker news. I'm not into it anymore, but J-Man right here, this old ass, he's going to be doing it. 
on his channel. He's working to get the equipment and stuff like that. So I do suggest you go over and subscribe to him. And I got my little mama, man, my senorita out of New Mexico. She has a channel too. Go over there. You'll learn how to cook. And especially if you got a wife that don't know how to cook, you know, example, China Dow, uh, that way she can teach him how to cook. But J-Man is going to be doing some biker news. Get your butts over there. He's a good guy, man. He's a 420 guy. This guy smokes more weed than I do in a freaking year, in a freaking month or so, man. This guy can smoke some 420. Uh, John Bruner, how you doing, buddy? Welcome to the channel. I got a side with you on the biker, babes. Plus, you can tell her to press her chest into the back. She doesn't cause me to crash on those bends. You know what? The best thing, you know what I do? is I'll speed up and I'll hit the brakes. That way China Dow, you know, flies right into my back. You got the poontang and the taco and stuff like that. Right on your back, man. Right on your back. It's beautiful. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, I'm going into the comment section right now, uh, seeing what you guys are talking about. Uh, Ringo Dingo. I like that, man. That's funny. You must have been high as hell when you got that name. Uh, saw Blue Knights meeting up with on-duty cops, smiling, taking pictures. Nice to know that's where my taxes went. But here's the thing, Ringo Dingo. You try to say that three times. Ringo Dingo, Ringo Dingo, Ringo Dingo. Anyway, at least I can say with the Blue Knights, when they first started up, everybody knew about it. They didn't try to act like something they weren't. They were actually legit LE. Now you got cops that throw on one pieces and they go out and harass actual citizens. It's disgusting. And then when the citizens fight back because they're thinking they're just regular Joe Schmoes, they pull badges out. So I at least I can say that the Blue Knights... <laughs> We're decent enough, you know what I mean? Uh, see here, Cheryl uh, Fountain Kemp, uh, Hollywood, you're going to have a food orgasm at the Rumble. I got gotcha. you. You know what? It's my sunshine is coming to uh, the Rumble in the Woods. That's for uh, Throttle Club members only. And boy, my goodness, I know China can't cook, and I know she can't cook over an open fire, so that's going to be a welcome deal for me, man. <laughs> Uh, Project uh, Redfoot, J-Man gets another subscriber. That's cool, man. Uh, check out his biker news and stuff. But in the comments, you know, I'm watching it right now. What do you think about these new clubs and wanting to circumvent the process? What do you think about them not having any honor? There used to be honor and loyalty, much love and respect. Man, those are just words now. People don't know it. People don't, they haven't lived it. And when you say or give the excuse why clubs that are freaking decades old didn't go through tradition, trying to use that as an excuse, morons. They put in the blood, they put in the sweat, and they put in the tears. Something that you didn't. Something you didn't. Straight up. But here's the thing. You must not have much against them because you want to be them. Isn't that the case? Or why would you try to be starting something? Because you want to be them. That's why I always looked and seen clubs start, then right away, they want to go international. Not even working on what they were doing. Do you understand, do you realize, you nipheads, that the clubs that you see worldwide right now have been around 80 years. 
75 years? That's how long it took them to do it. And you think because there's the internet that you're going to do it overnight. You're plain freaking stupid. Because what's going to happen? It's going to fail. It's going to fail right away. T-Spain, my man. Hopefully you're safe out there. They just don't want a prospect. Lazy, but in effect, if they can back their patch, then more power to them. The dominants don't enforce like they used to anymore. <coughs> I agree. But it's not on the dominant's fault that they don't. As I figured out, things have changed. There's different laws. There's different technology that it can get you caught up. So why would you want to risk a brother having to do 10 years because this jackass over here wanted to play dress up in club uh, garb? That's one thing to understand. The second thing is the dominance are dealing with so many clubs popping up now. If you're in a big city of, say, like Chicago, with there's 6 million people in there, the problem is these clubs hide out in their backyards. They don't go to any events. So most of the time, the dominants don't even know they're there. Make sure you're safe. T-Spain will be coming to the Rumble in the Woods. I can't wait, man. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, Fred, I made a comment and realized to explain I would end up writing a book. You know what? I get like that, Fred. I start free. It's just like my talks. You know, I, I, I got a, too much Italian in me, okay? I like talking. I use my hands, all that stuff. Uh, but once I get going, I get going, man. Uh I love it when people write books because it really tells me what uh, everybody's thinking, man. You know, this is why I went to this uh, StreamYard instead of uh, what I've been using is because you can get interactive with everybody. Uh, Shelton, you crack me up just now, Hollywood. Rock on roll, uh, Shelton. You know what? I crack up a lot of people, and sometimes I even crack up myself. You know, it's a it's an embarrassing thing when you are sitting there talking to yourself and you're joking with yourself and you make yourself laugh. It's just messed up. Uh bro scientist, is that biker chuck dude legit or a poser? You know what? I'm not gonna really talk about him because he's not around anymore on the biker stuff. One thing I can tell you is all his advice on motorcycle clubs was bullshit, but the dude can ride. You got to see, I believe in giving people credit where credit's due. The dude can ride. He did a lot of riding, man. He was a uh, old scooter type of tramp, if you ask me. Uh, let's see here. Gray Wolf. Oh, there's my Gray Wolf. People trying to start a new club need to understand that they will be the center of attention from not only established clubs, but Leo will put you at the top of the list to be messed with. Uh, you know what? We talk about freaking motorcycle club profiling all the time. And what we get back is, well, cops ain't that bad, or they don't do this, or they don't do that. Well, until they get their ass busted for it, then they're like, you know what? Can I fill out that survey? I didn't think they are going to blow me over. Yeah, you blowhards. Yeah, that's what they do. They've been doing it forever, probably since freaking Hollister. You know, you can't go out there and that's one thing I don't get. You're you're supporting them, but most of them despise your ass because they despise how you live, your freedom. And again, I have to add the tail you get. You get a lot of tail out there when you're a biker. That, you know what it is? You can give the ugliest dude... A freaking Harley Davidson. And the dude's got freaking, I don't know how many chicks on his freaking pecker, man. Are you kidding me? Harley is the best invention for men has ever had. Uh, by the way, tomorrow at 8 a.m., I'm going to be talking about uh, 
my Boulevard versus my freaking uh, Fat Boy. And as everybody knows, is I just picked up a Dyna Y Glide and I'm trading it for something. And you guys are going to be freaked out. You're going to say, Hollywood, you are no longer on 420, but you are on crack. Okay? You're on crack. But hey, it is what it is. Uh, also, China Doll and uh, my show that's on the radio station, if you miss it live on the radio, which is MotorcycleMadHouseRadio.com, or you to download the uh, Zeno FM app and listen to it there. If you miss it, you'll be able to see the replay of it with video on her channel. I'm getting everything set up. Uh, she a pain in me ass. Uh, let's see here. Randy Russell. Cops pull me over all the time, but I can't can't get me for anything. Uh, let's see here. I was curious about Chuck as he banned me for disagreement with some of the, his views. Well, you know, if you can't have an, you know, here's the thing about that. If you're having a man's conversation and you're not being a dickhead, usually a creator will sit there and debate you, talk to you. But there's a lot of people that when they hear the other side of the story, they get assholes. And at that point, it's like, okay, it's not a disagreement. You're just being a dick. And we don't have enough time to deal with that kind of stuff. That's where it comes down to is what it is. Uh, but thanks for that question, bro. Silence. If you got any questions, let me know. Any comments, let me know why I'm on right now. Uh, Geo, man. Geo's my boy, too, man. Geo is one of the moderators on Discord. Uh, if you're not on Discord, you're missing out, man, because we got Vipers versus Hooligans over there. Them Vipers are tearing up my Hooligans, though. That's hogwash. Uh, Geo, uh, Leo and clubs don't mix like oil and water. Uh, you got that right. It is oil and water. Now, I'm not saying that cops shouldn't have, because they love motorcycles too. I'm not saying that they shouldn't have their own group and stuff. But why do you got to freaking copy the exact same things that you don't like? Why can't you throw on a one piece damn patch, man? Why can't you do that? What's so hard about that? then you wouldn't get all the aggravation that you guys get from me. I wouldn't be a dick all the time, man. <laughs> oh, let's see here. What else we got? Uh, family life. You just never hung out with cops like me. You know what? <laughs> oh, one of these days. <laughs> gonna smoke some dope or something he does seem cool man you know i don't know him but he does uh seem cool he's always out there throwing the cop side because i believe in uh giving uh everybody their uh side of the story and stuff like that no the roast ain't common family life man <laughs> i'm trying to be cool uh Geo family I have in Chicago that are biggest gang I ever met. Oh, Chicago cops are the freaking worst, man. The freaking worst. You don't have to tell me twice. So the moral of the story here is new motorcycle clubs, don't do it. Run, 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 run. And go join an existing club. And if creators are going to put out this kind of shit, at least talk to these people real. Hopefully, they're old enough to understand and have the knowledge to know that you're not trying to hurt their feelings, that it's just the way the world is. I think that's the moral of the story, man. So tomorrow, 8 a.m., as always, Monday through Friday, check us out. Then we go right over to the radio station and... <laughs> freaking sarge he's my traitor he's no longer a hooligan he's traitor proud lesbian <laughs> uh bronx bike life and the getaway with it and give us real mcs a bad name you got that man uh you guys take care have a good one uh go out there pump some taco 
Enjoy your fa Father's Day. Hopefully, they're treating you with a nice BJ and a freaking uh, steak. If not, there's something wrong with you, man. You got to take your balls back. You got to be a man and demand what you want. Listen to the show on the radio. You'll know what Hollywood's talking about. I'll catch you guys later. You guys be good or not. Audi.